So how do you write romance, particularly when it comes to manga and anime kid stories? Well, first you need a basic looking protagonist character with brown or black hair, sit him in the back of the class, give him a quirky love interest and throw in a harem and you're done. Goodbye, thank you for listening. Look, it's not hard to turn out a romance story according to the usual tropes, and to be fair, stuff like Nisakoye here turned out pretty well. I bet there's also some pretty popular ones out there that do their job well, but to be honest, I'm not quite interested in that kind of romance story. Romance, in my opinion, is a spice to a meal. A very delicious spice when applied sparingly and in conjunction with other good pieces of the meal, but it can never be the meal itself, otherwise you end up with a nasty mess or something bland and repetitive. For the purpose of this talk, I'll break romance into two types. One, the story type romance, with characters embroiled in their personal conflicts and lives, the one that I happen to like the most, and two, the market type romance, basically romance porn. The character slash character wish fulfillment stories. Billionaires with soft sides, going after a regular looking girl, the school nerd and the school beauty, etc, etc. Hey, I'm guilty as well as far as fantasizing about these sorts of things, but by that fact alone, and by that fact alone you'll be guaranteed to interest some readers, and that's why it's a surefire way to write a successful romance tale. Hence, the market type romance title. However, I'll advise you on the story-based romance, because that's always the best in the end. First things first, your love interests are beings, whether gods, humans, animals, whatever the main character is, they have lives before they are love interests. They've had childhoods, they've had problems, and if they're in a manga or anime, they're probably fighting giant robots or something crazy and wackier. From Shimon crossing dimensions to fight the anti spirals to Araragi facing the darkness of, of the supernatural to the timid jacuzzi caught up in the mafia world and later along the line having to deal with immortality and devils. That's Guren Lagan, that's Bakemonogatari, and that's Bakano. All amazing legendary anime in their own right, and they stand on their storylines and plot alone. But it doesn't mean they don't have romance in them. Indeed, it's because of their looming epicness that the little spices of romance that are in them are all the more interesting, all the more exciting. It, it makes you wish for more. It makes you wish they gave the characters more time to take walks in the park, make, make love under the stars, and have families. This is what fuels thousands of fan fictions and pairings, and it's that aspect of a well-told story with well-written romance that type 2 romance stories try to emulate. But I feel that cuts down characters and their lives into this one singular aspect, and that's just wrong to do, I really feel. There has to be something more to it for the romance to really have that bite. So 1. Have a story. You can have love interests, but why should we care about the characters involved? You might as well be honest and write a lemon fake and get it over if, if that's what it's all about if it's all about the sex, so work on your plot and story first. In the end, writing comes down to the plot and the story. Two, have wars. As a certain man once said, build a war. Terrible political joke at a wrong time, but look, Mary really wants to kill her arch enemy, Mr. Bad Guy, right? So, hell no, she won't settle down in an apartment with regular timid Jack who only wants to be good at his job as an accountant. Think up more interesting obstacles in the paths of the characters that encourage conflict between them, you know? Sometimes these things can even lead to tragedies, where despite the characters' love for each other, they end up fighting against each other, or one dies off because they couldn't change. And when you make your audience range rage on for years on end about how how they wish it were def different, then you've struck a chord. When they really feel for how the situation re resolves itself, then you've written something worth reading. Let your characters have their own dreams and beliefs that they stick to, no matter what. They can be as funny as a relationship-threatening argument about whether Star Wars is better than Star Trek, or as dead serious as a vow of revenge that one of the lovers won't let go. When you have your story to work off of, and real conflict between the love interests that they have to either compromise for their own beliefs or suffer the consequences of going after their own goals, then you can have a legitimate romance story with substance. And forgive my black trench coat and examples geared towards action and tragedy and all that dark stuff. I don't mean you should always have a fight going on or a life-and-death situation going on for romance to mean anything. 
even for stories grounded in reality, you can make really fulfilling, fulfilling romantic narratives. I mean, look at Koe no Kotachi. That is a beautiful romance story. And that is a rare example of, for me, <laughs> to actually like a story that didn't have that much action in it. But the main key is letting your characters live. Rather than saying, it's a ship, and mashing their faces against each other's lips and saying that's romance, you should have them live their lives and let the plot play out. You are working with living beings. Let them live and let them love and then everyone will be happy. Thank you for any attention rendered. This was Lego Maestro. Peace.